Hi everyone, welcome to another video from the Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Basford. We are still on our page of various um, pretty little um, wizarding items and we have this spell book to do today. Now I've been little, thinking a little bit about um, what colour to do it. I love the fact that there are little bookmarks in different bits and we have the lovely um, tassel and things like that as if we're marking different special spells I think that's great fun I think what we'd do actually to start with is to colour the pages of the book um, the sort of plain paper and then we'll do all the little details after now I think I said when we were doing the parchment um, picture that I would normally do paper pages that sort of thing in a sort of brown ochre or green gold so I'm going to do that today um, for you and show you that effect now of course books tend to have white pages as does this one or cream or whatever but um, I'm thinking this is a sort of old book and so oh there we go and so it might be slightly browned on the paper now I have to have a little look and see where the cover is because the cover of the book wouldn't be the same colour as the pages but this bit here is definitely a page from the way it's drawn so I'm going to do the pages and I'm pressing really lightly I don't want it to look like it's brown and dirty I just want it to look like it's sort of slightly aged um, you may have gone to old bookshops and seen old books this sort of there's acid in the paper and it tends to make them go slightly orangey brown color that's the sort of effect I'm sort of going for just so that it doesn't look white and it stands out from the page a little bit because these pages are right on the background you could do a background and leave it white but it's not what I'm looking to do so I'm just gonna as I say keep it quite gentle just so that it's just a touch of colour. Now I know we've got this border around which I think I will colour. Didn't notice it until I started colouring. So um, we'll go over that. And that'll be fine. And just colour through the page. Now, I was expecting workmen today. I was told I'd get some either today or tomorrow. No one's turned up yet today. So I don't know if I'll be interrupted by some arriving. It's, it's a bit late now. Oh, my printer's just making a noise. I printed something earlier. What it does is it sort of wakes up for a bit and then goes back into a sort of standby mode. I think I'm going to do that bit round there. That's it. I'm just going to leave it like that. It's very pale. I may add more later. I haven't decided yet. I'm just going to put that pencil aside for now. We'll see how it sort of develops. Now the cover of the book, we can just see a little bit of it peeping through. And I think a nice deep red would look nice. I'm thinking of old leather bound hardback books um, which we don't see the likes of these days and I also think it'll stand out quite well which is nice. We need to sort of inject some colour where we can. Uh, that bit's there, it doesn't quite line up does it? But it doesn't matter. There we go. So that's our cover. I'm not going to do too much more with that just make sure it's a fairly solid line now the um, this ribbon it doesn't look like the type that's attached to a book they would normally be right in the spine but I still feel it could be I was thinking of doing it gold because you know that would be quite pretty but it was not going to really show up against this brown so I'm thinking let's do a different colour um, I'm thinking maybe a mauve might look nice. This is my little mauve. Um, I didn't say these are polychromos. Um, I'm using the same pencils for all this page. I sort of forget to tell you because they're sort of assuming you're watching the whole series but you may or may not be. Um, but yeah, polychromos. But you can use any pencils, any deep purple would work there, wouldn't it? Now we've got the leaves printed on the page. I just spotted those. I'm going to do those next. Um, again, I want them to be quite dark so they show up. But um, what should we use? 
So yeah, let's use the deep cobalt green. Um, we use this for the plant, um, which is on the end of this column. Um, and uh, it's quite a nice dark, I think magical, but you know, obviously that's my view. <laughs> there and I'm thinking maybe we'll do one of these pieces of paper in the same colour this one but really lightly so I'm just doing a little light circular movement just gently kissing the paper with the pencil getting a light layer so it doesn't look like it's exactly the same colour as that but it's enough to uh, match if that makes sense now we have this sort of star constellation here with dots. Now I don't want to ignore those dots, I want to colour them in, but I've coloured over them in brown. So I need to be a little bit careful in my colour choice. If I say chose yellow, it's not going to show up. Um, I think maybe an orange would work. So that's what I'm going to try. I picked this orange, this is the cadmium orange, because it is the longest orange out of my oranges. It's not a good reason really, is it? But I think it'll be dark enough to show up without being too bright. And I'm just going to do those little circles. Like that. And I'm going to do this piece of paper in orange. So I'm going to sort of follow, you can see a pattern, I'm sure, like that. Now we have a border on this page which is thick and can be filled in. On this page we have a little border which isn't. I'm actually going to make them match and make them both have a coloured border. What colour? I hear you say. I've no idea, I reply. <laughs> Sorry, slightly mad today. I'm going to go for the middle purple pink. It's just a nice colour. That's my reasoning. And we'll go and around again there's no shading just a thick layer if you think about how a book is printed it's not printed with shading usually not this sort of thing borders and stuff like that I'm assuming this would be a handwritten book I'm gonna color this in look I'm just gonna take go slightly inside the line that's drawn there don't have to do this if you don't feel confident but it is just colouring a line, it's not too tricky. I can't draw. Um, I know, oh you shouldn't say you can't draw. Yeah, I can try and draw, but I can't draw confidently or in a way that pleases me. But I can, I can colour a line, follow a line and colour it. There we go. I think that just makes it look a bit more interesting. And I'm going to use this pink just for that square there, really lightly. Okay, now we've got a selection of stars on our pages and a couple of stars on the outside. I'm not going to do them all the same colour. I think that's going to be a little bit too samey. Let's do the one here first. Um, let's not do yellow. As I said, yellow isn't going to show up. So let's do an unconventional colour. Um, what's that colour? Yeah, we'll do this one. This is cobalt blue greenish. It's actually quite blue, to be honest, although it's called greenish. I think it's quite a dark blue. And this border here. Gently. There we go. Hard to speak when you're colouring really gently. Um, now, over here, we've got four stars. I'm thinking mm, two one colour to another colour, maybe. Now I'm looking at my colours, thinking what should I do, what's going to stand out, what's going to look magical and pretty. Um, we've got a lot of colours that we've used already. What are we sort of missing? Nothing really. Um, I quite, hmm, I quite fancy doing another green. I'm thinking of doing this one. Let's try this, the earth green. Oops. Can you read that? Probably not. Right. Perhaps green is an odd idea for a star, but then it's magic, you know? So uh, maybe it's okay. 
because we're making magic. We're not um, making stars, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm going to go for a pinky red. I think this one. Oops, no, this one. Oh, I can't reach it. The um, Alizarin in crimson. We'll do these two. And this bit of paper here really lightly. You could do some do a piece of paper in white if you wanted. I just think it shows up better. Now I'm gonna grab the mauve that we use for this and do this piece of paper with it. Because we haven't used we haven't got a purple piece yet. I like that. Now we have got the stars around the outside and I'm thinking we can do those in yellow. Maybe we will. And we've got a sort of magical dots and things. Mm, just trying to think. Could get out some gel pens, do something like that. I think I'm just going to grab a nice vibrant yellow. This is the dark cadmium yellow. There we go. And it's quite orangey and bright. And I'm going to do the stars with that. I hope they're going to show up against the white. Try and do the dots as well, but they are teeny weeny. There. Now, where these pages are lying here, yeah, there would be some shadow underneath. So I'm just going to draw that in a little bit. This is the brown ochre that I used that you can't read. <laughs> that I used for the... Uh, main page and I'm just going to draw a line along here that's a little bit darker to just show the shadow of the page. I'm going to do that underneath as well. Hopefully you can see that. My great clunking hand in the way. I'm also going to do a bit under this curl. I think shadow would be a bit thicker just at the bottom there only short at the top and then we've got all these other pages too so under this one here now this is like the slightly complex last little tweak but it doesn't really have to be that it's not really that hard that and then here now this has to be quite thin because this page is narrow so I'm almost colouring on top of the black line and I'm just trying to make it quite hard so that it shows up enough without me having to make it too thick I hope that makes sense this one's even narrow and I can barely see it my eyes are almost going cross-eyed <laughs> And the same down here. Yeah, it's very odd light in here this morning. It's raining, dark and dingy. I've opened the blind to let the what light there is in. But it's just dark. That doesn't look brilliant. But you get the idea, hopefully, of what I'm trying to do. I'm also going to do a bit of shadow from here. Just on this side, I think. Going to show up massively well. There we go. Now the pieces of paper. I want to do a little shadow there. I'm going to grab my dark sepia for that because these are slightly darker colours. So this pink piece is sitting on top of this dark piece. It's going to be a little bit of shadow. So I'm just going to go around the edge of it like that, and then here, but also where the book. The page of the book is overlapping the pieces. There'd be a little bit. It's just a touch. So say if you're not confident doing this bit, you don't have to. You do need a fairly sharp pencil, probably sharper than mine. And a bit there. And there we are. Now you can do a bit of magical colour around the book if you wish to. I'm not going to. I'm quite happy with it as it is. So I'm just going to leave it like that. But it is completely up to you. If you feel that you want a bit more magic. I mean, you know, I'd be really tempted to rub 
a little bit of pastel round, um, soft pastels or something round in a very pale pink or a purple, something like that, you know, a lilac, not, not a violet. But there we go. So I'm going to end there. Um, thank you for watching. We've still got six pictures to go on this page. I'm really excited. They are such lovely pictures. Although the mushroom toadstool page picture I did already, um, but I think I'm going to do it again in a really different way on this page. So you may have to bear with me doing it twice because I did it on the um, on the, the the pencil test page, whatever it's called, um, to test out my Stedler pencils. But um, I'm go I need to do it on this page as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. I do hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>